Hi, everyone. I'm Michael, and I'm doing my keystone on the application and efficacy of music therapy techniques in Alzheimer's treatment regimens. So as many of you might know, I'm a cellist here within the College of Fine Arts and have spent a large portion of my academic career here thinking about music from an aesthetic, philosophical, and practical performance perspective. But I was really interested in the ways that music could be utilized and appreciated in a way that extended beyond the stage and into more tangible benefits for people. So one thing that I do a lot as a musician is performing benefit concerts in schools, community centers, and nursing homes. Shout out to Hannah and Bam in this picture over here. Um, and then on the left, there's a picture of me performing a concert a couple of years back in Burlington, Vermont at an inpatient treatment facility for people with Alzheimer's and related dementias. And after I was done playing, I got to talking with a lot of the staff there who told me that many of the patients saw a notable improvement in many areas of cognitive function for a period of time after hearing concerts and other musical exposures like the one that I had just played. And this eventually led me to explore the field of music therapy in general and then its applications in the treatment of neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's. So the goal of my Keystone project is to provide a systematic review of the research surrounding the efficacy of music therapy treatments in Alzheimer's disease, utilizing analyses of various independent studies, reviews, and systematic reviews of peer-reviewed publications related to music therapy and Alzheimer's disease using sources um, such as online databases, including PubMed, the Journal of Music Therapy, and the Alzheimer's and Dementia Journal. And I restricted my my search of the literature from 2009 to 2019, just to get the most recent picture possible because research on the disease progresses rapidly these days. Um, so the research itself includes looking at the extent to which music therapy can or can't ameliorate Alzheimer's detrimental effects on a person's memory, their behavior and their emotion. And building off of my initial research, I'm also consulting with clinical music therapists from the Berkeley College of Music and developing a music therapy treatment plan for individuals with Alzheimer's that would hopefully be used as a template for future clinical Alzheimer's treatment. So in order to contextualize the problem a bit, I just wanted to share some really key stats that emphasize the prevalence and severity of Alzheimer's, especially given that a lot of the audience here is on the younger side and we're a little bit more remo removed um, from Alzheimer's and the effect that it has. So according to the U.S. Center for Disease Control, there is an 89% increase in Alzheimer's deaths from 2000 to 2014, and it's currently the sixth leading cause of death in the U.S. and the fifth leading cause of death in adults over the age of 65. It's so prevalent, in fact, that one in three seniors dies with Alzheimer's or some form of dementia, and in 2021, Alzheimer's care is going to cost the nation about $355 billion. Um, so that really just kind of puts it in perspective and gives you the scope of how big it's really getting and it's only going to become a more prevalent issue in the future. And as I'm sure many of you know, there isn't a cure for Alzheimer's currently and it can just be symptomatically managed. And a standard treatment regimen involves a combination of pharmacotherapy, psychosocial intervention and cognitive reserve, uh, which encapsulates exercise, intellectual stimulation from playing games, reading, learning new language, um, or you know, just participating in hobbies. Um, so typical Alzheimer's drugs typically fall into two main categories, the first of which is chlorinesterase inhibitors, and these work by blocking the normal breakdown of acetylcholine, which is a neurotransmitter that's integral to motor function, and the second of which being NMDA receptor antagonists, which inhibit NMDA receptors, um, and it's in, these are important for controlling synaptic plasticity and mediating learning and memory functions. And so if you have Alzheimer's disease, your cells make too much glutamate. And when this happens, nerve cells get too much calcium, which speeds up damage to them. So MMDA receptor antagonists make it harder for the glutamate to dock, um, but they can still let important signals flow in between cells. So this is an example of daily routine for somebody with Alzheimer's, and it, it'll look something like this. And the important thing to note here is that it is really structured every bit of the day because spontaneous activities or you know, surprise changes can oftentimes be really scary or aggravating or confusing uh, for Alzheimer's patients. So keeping that routine is really important. It's something I took into consideration when thinking about making my own treatment plan. So I've been talking a lot about this um, and kind of dancing around what exactly is music therapy? Um, so broadly speaking, it is a series of musical inter interventions aimed at promoting a client or patient's quality of life in the clinical setting. And music therapists utilize a variety of ways that people actually interact with music. So physically, emotionally, mentally, socially, and aesthetically in order to improve health in one or more areas related to cognition, such as emotion, education, socialization, and communication. So music therapy is generally broken down into two spheres, active 
music therapy and receptive music therapies. So active music therapies might constitute something like clapping along with a song or singing in a group or dancing. And an example of passive music therapy would be a, like a guided listening led by a music therapist from either live or recorded music. And then like a subsequent follow-up discussion talking about how the music is affecting the individual in a good or bad way and, and kind of taking further steps from that discussion. So the literature shows that both receptive and active music therapy techniques have been shown to be really effective in improving cognitive tasks. A prominent study from a couple of years ago that showed that Alzheimer's disease patients who listen to um, a Mozart piano sonata were shown to perform better in spatial temporal tasks um, and the cognition of abstraction domains compared to those who did not listen to the music beforehand. Another study showed that patients who sang their favorite karaoke songs over a six month period showed improvements in certain neuropsychiatric symptoms. Um, and another interesting study showed that music with a perceived sad affect relative to the other emotions are better at promoting autobiographical recall. And, and this is evidence of the power of emotion in memory recall as mediated through a musical medium. Um, in addition to memory recall, singing was found to help Alzheimer's disease patients and encoding verbal information a lot better. So here's a sample treatment plan for uh, a sample music therapy treatment plan for Alzheimer's disease. And my goal here was to incorporate both active and passive methods of music therapy treatments as they've been shown to have their own individual benefits and treat certain aspects of the disease better. So active music therapy treatments have been shown to be beneficial in the domains of perception and memory, learning, attention, decision-making, and language abilities, whereas passive music therapy techniques are better suited at addressing issues with behavior and mood. Um, and and a, a really important thing to note here is because the progression of the disease itself is so personal, the treatment plan should be tailored to how the disease is affecting the patient. So for example, if aspects of cognition are worse in a particular day or week, um, it might be prudent to incorporate more active music therapy treatments. And conversely, if the behavior is a bigger issue on a daily or weekly basis, try to incorporate more passive music therapy treatments such as guided listening. Um, and so the idea around this plan is to be more of a general template to kind of give some guidance as to what a typical week of treatment might look like for early to mid-stage Alzheimer's patients um, and not uh, an uber prescriptive thing because the disease does change so much and is so individual. Um, so there were a couple other things that I wanted to consider with this. Firstly is the importance of routine, which I touched on earlier. Um, and you'll note that if you observe at the top, there's a consistency in the individual listening sessions. Um, and this kind of consistent passive music therapy can act as a really good means of regulating mood um, and is a structural pillar that fits well within the other routine aspects of Alzheimer's care and treatment. The second thing is that active music therapy elements outlined here have a social element to them. And that's because regular socialization is really important for Alzheimer's patients because it helps keep their mind sharp and makes it easier for their minds to make a transition. Um, and seniors who are able to make this switch more efficiently are better able to cope with the tasks involved with daily living and function a bit more independently than they otherwise would. And so this combined with the cognitive benefits of participating in active music therapy treatments can act as a, a fairly comprehensive use of music therapy techniques to address the cognitive, emotional, and behavioral challenges that the disease, that the disease itself can prevent. So some future steps uh, for my project include building a deeper understanding of the relationship between music therapy and Alzheimer's disease uh, through continued reading of relevant scientific literature. And specifically, I wanna do more of a deep dive looking at the neurological mechanisms underlying the interaction between Alzheimer's and music therapy, ter music therapy techniques as they relate to cognition. Um, and additionally, I wanna meet with more clinical music therapists to refine the treatment plan a little bit more, maybe get a little bit more spe specific and devise plans for multiple use cases in, in um, Alzheimer's patients because the disease does affect people on such an individual level. Um, and that includes looking at early stage patients versus mid-stage versus late stage Alzheimer's disease um, and seeing how the treatment changes for each level of those patients. And that's about it. So I'll be happy to take any questions. Okay, thank you.